Uh, if you really know the history of uh, of Tagore, uh, Rabindranath Tagore was a direct product of a very strong cultural movement in Bengal and Eastern India that was called the Bengal Renaissance. The Bengal Renaissance was nothing less than you know the Italian Renaissance that we all read in the history book. We read more about European history than Indian history, which is very strange. <laughs> Um, and, and, and the only thing we know about Indian history is about the emperors and how to build these huge, uh, you know, like the palaces and, and castles. Uh, uh, cultural history is also a very, very important part of our history, but we really do not hear much about it or read much about it in our, in our textbooks, which is very strange for me. But the point is that Bengal Renaissance was a very, very important part of our Indian history. What happened at that time was that because of that cultural movement, um, people came out uh, against orthodoxy. People came out against uh, Brahminism, uh, you know, the caste system, the, the, uh, um, the seclusion, the discrimination against people. Women came out strongly because of the Bengal Renaissance and they empowered themselves with education. That was the first time when women actually went to high school and then women actually went to college. On top of the fact that they are themselves very artistic and very, very high in artistic quality itself, but you have to go beyond that, just like you want to go beyond the gatekeeper to touch the feet of the real king, you have to find out what the real message is. And the real mes message of Tagore's songs and Tagore's poetry is emancipation. We all know what emancipation is, right? You guys are very smart. Emancipation is inner freedom, inner liberty. I'm sorry, I'm just giving you something that you already know. You guys are very smart. So emancipation is really the primary message of Tagore. In all his writing, in his Tagore is has been used very selectively by the media. Okay? In, in our country, media, in all the other countries, in the United States also, media uses uh, all these very important people in a very selective way. They do not tell the whole story. So when media talks about Tagore and people just go in front of his statue or, or painting and you know, they start worshipping him, they do that without really knowing what he was all about. Because that message is, has not been conveyed to them. Selectively excluded, taken out of the worshipping process. So Tagore's message is really the message of emancipation. Okay? And Tagore was one of the primary social reformers who worked actively for the empowerment of women. And Tagore came from a uh, a school of thought that is known as uh, Brahmanism. And Brahmanism was uh, a religious social movement that actually uh, dissolved the barriers of caste. They did not believe in caste system. So all these things happened way back in the 19th, early 19th and late 19th century. And Tagore and, well, Raja Ramohan Roy was probably one of the primary forces behind the Bengal Renaissance. And a Portuguese scholar named Tirozio, who came from, his father came from Portugal, and he was one of the primary teachers of Bengal Renaissance. And he was so important in his time. And guess what? This uh, young teacher died when he was 23 years old. And before he turned 23, he actually changed the face of Bengali uh, intelligentsia and Bengali uh, youth, youth at that time. And that was really the start of the social reform movement. I'm just giving you a little history lesson because, first of all, he gave me a lot of time and I really have to say something. That's number one. And number two, I think this is a very important part of our history that we sometimes uh, we are, we overlook. So this is a good
time to talk about it before you know I, I start playing some Tagore songs and tell you what the messages are all about. So Tagore's message is, is the message of emancipation. If you really go beyond his songs, uh, Gitanjali, every time you talk about Tagore, people say, oh, Gitanjali, I know Gitanjali. Okay, that's great. Gitanjali is great. But there is so much beyond Gitanjali. So if you really read the translations of Tagore's drama, Tagore's short stories, Tagore's novels, some of them, all of them were written obviously, Tagore died in 1941, so all of them were written 100 years, or, you know, 150 years ago. First of all, they are still so contemporary. If you read them, you would think whether it's his songs, or whether it is uh, his poetry, whether it is his drama, or short stories, or novels, you would think that they were written yesterday. The language is so modern and so contemporary. That's number one. It would have no uh, problem understanding his language. You would never think that these words were crafted some 100 or 150 years ago. They are so modern. We actually talk in that type of a language today. So there is no time separation. There is no time gap between now and then. That is how modern he is. And number two, they are so radical. I cannot believe that some of the things that he wrote back then, he actually wrote them back then because they are so radical. He is actually talking about, uh, there is this very important uh, short story which I also translated. It's called A Letter from a Wife. This wife is a very traditional uh, families like uh, middle bride. Uh, she, she is not like physically abused or anything like that. She was not that extremely abused or, or anything, but she was always repressed by a very patriarchal, male-dominated system. And then she is actually seeing some of the poorer women being abused by the society and she is not being able to help them or save them. And that is making her more and more and more frustrated and eventually she decides to quit that family's shelter and husband's shelter and she leaves the home and writes a long letter to her husband uh, saying why she is leaving the family, why she cannot be a part of that family anymore and she is not ready to take that, that uh, uh, patriarchy anymore. She is coming out of it. That was written 150 years ago. And this is just one example. If you want, I can email uh, assume the uh, short story that I translated and you can read it, but I'm not the only one that did it. Many other people have also, also translated some of his most important literature. The point is that when our country is being so completely overwhelmed by kitsch, okay, when serious art, real art is being excluded and undermined from mainstream conversation. When real artists, senior artists, young artists, they are being marginalized by the people in power, by media. When you only see, when you see art, you see Bollywood. When you see dance, you see some trash dance that really makes you like makes me nauseated from time to time. When you see MTV, it's like so, so not Indian. I don't know how else I can describe it. And it really doesn't have to be very conservative Indian. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the difference between art and non-art. And what is non-art is now being imposed on us as art. And, and you, the young people, really need to understand it and do something about it. I think when we live in America, you know, 12,000 miles away from my own country, and when, you know, like I have really nothing to fall back on, Tagore comes to my rescue. But it really doesn't have to be Tagore only. It can be anything. The only thing is that it has to be real art and something that is not the Dalwan, not the gatekeeper with the curly mustache, but the real king who is waiting inside for you. 
you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to if I can just have like two minutes of your time I can set it up and I can I can play a couple of songs I've actually recorded a new CD of Tagore song, songs very recently but the CD is not out yet it's going to uh, be released on the 21st of January but I have some sample songs with me I'm just going to play one or two for you and then if you're interested I also have translations of those two songs that I'm going to play for you. Uh, if you're interested, then I can show them. Writings and through his songs. 
And if you do not know, when there was this huge massacre by the British uh, general in uh, Chalian Walabad in Punjab, Tagore actually, he was knighted. He was Sar Raghunath Tagore. And out of contempt, he actually wrote a letter to the British uh, Queen and quit his knighthood uh, in protest of the Jalian Walabad massacre. When some other very well known Indian leaders, I don't want to name them, they did not really do anything to protest against it. So, 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 Puja, Prem, Shwabesh, and then there is a huge collection of songs that is called Prakriti, that means nature. So, and then because we have six seasons, he actually has written hundreds of songs classified into the six seasons under Prakriti or nature. So these are some of his major creations in terms of his songs. He wrote approximately 2,500 to 3,000 songs. And this is just a, one part of his creation. Then we are not even talking about his many short stories and novels and, and drama and other um, essays and whatnot. And then when he was 70 years old, for the painters here, when he was 70 years old, he started painting. He took up painting when he was 70 years old. And if you, whatever paintings that you see, uh, what, now everything is available on the internet perhaps, he did them all after he turned 70 years old. So when I went back to school, I was only 14 years old. Way before that, Tegor actually showed me a way when he was 70 years old. Thank you very much. <laughs>